Hello everyone. I am certified natural healthcare practitioner Erin Thole, and today I'm talking with Colton Thayer from Way Labs, um, which is a traditional Chinese medicine company. So all those good herbs. Um, and today we're talking about candida. Colton, do you want to do a little intro on yourself? Talk a little bit about what you do, then we'll yeah. dive right in. Yeah, so what what I do here at the uh, at the lab is I work with a lot of uh, <laughs> um, just functional practitioners, uh, a lot of people in the natural health space, and we work basically integrating our Chinese herbals into their practice, working with their clients, um, and we really go to like condition specific treatments. Um, so like today we're talking about candida, but we have something for pretty much anything out there, mm -hmm. right? Our goal is to balance the body. Yeah, we have fun doing it too. <laughs> for sure. Um, but yeah, so today we're talking about candida here. And I guess I just wanted to start off by asking you, Aaron, what is candida? What What is it? So candida in its most simplest forms is a type of yeast, a, um, a yeast that can grow to a parasitic level. It's an unwanted microorganism basically that um, lives in a lot of people's gut in an unhealthy quantity. So candida is kind of like the blanket term that's, that's labeled for any kind of like unwanted pathogenic yeast that one would have in, in the gut. Um, you can have yeast, you can have candida infections systemically. You can have them throughout your entire body. Some people have them in their nervous system. Some people have them in their limb for their thyroid. Like you can have them any, your bladder, like you can have them, you can have them anywhere. Um, but a lot of times people have them in their gut and then it just kind of branches out branches out from there the longer it it goes on yeah but it's definitely it can cause a multitude of symptoms it comes from many different sources and it can um cause people all kinds of crazy crazy symptoms and issues mm -hmm. yeah yeah have you seen the show uh the last of us have you seen no. that? oh it's uh, like it's like uh it's a new hbo show and it's basically this candida it was like a type of cordyceps infects population and it kind of turns them into zombies kind of controls okay. them. but it, it's a big show like I'd encourage you to check it out because it's freaky right and like candida a lot of people brush it off they're like ah it's a little bit of mold but you know it can turn into a lot you know more serious issues it can turn into a lot of serious issues yeah and it can turn you kind of into a zombie in a lot of different ways I'm mm -hmm. yeah now that we're yeah. Same. <laughs> like so like how does somebody get candida there's a multitude of ways to get candida for a lot of people it's kind of a perfect storm type situation where it's like first this happened then these other things just kind of followed suit so sometimes it's something that starts in childhood and if you were on a lot of antibiotics as a child um, for various reasons you know overuse of antibiotics is considered more than five times being on an antibiotic in your life. Mm. So I know that as a <laughs> child, I was most definitely on antibiotics more than five times in elementary school. So, I mean, for so many of us, we've, we've already like tipped our ecosystem into not a great position. That doesn't uh -huh. mean that everybody's going to get candida that's been on antibiotics that many times, but the more you use them and the more there's these other, you know, factors thrown in there, um, there's, you know, certain diets that will contribute to yeast overgrowth. There's certain drugs that will contribute to yeast overgrowth and things like that. So a lot of times it's not like this one thing happened and then I developed candida. It's like a progressive type thing. I was on all these antibiotics because I had this mystery illness or I was really sick as a kid. And then, you know, I had to have surgery and I was pumped full of all these drugs, you know, cause I broke my ankle and it had to be reconstructed or whatever it is. And then you're on the pain meds and the anti-inflammatory meds and the surgery in and of itself kind of is like a big drop in the bucket that can tip a lot of people over and a lot of issues come from that. So 
all of these things really add to that ecosystem disruption within the gut. Um, so some of the biggest things that I see in terms of ecosystem disruption um, from like a food and then also drug kind of perspective in people is long-term birth control use and overuse of antibiotics um, and overuse of steroids and overuse of anti-inflammatory medications. Um, those are, those are the big, the big ones. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes for some people, depending on the ecosystem of their gut, when they start using like an antidepressant and an anti-anxiety medication that can also contribute to the erosion of the gut. And so then that can kind of by, you know, proxy, um, add to the issue as well. And then foods, anything that's yeasty, you know, so just look on the back of your, your packages and things like that. A lot of times yeast is added to crackers and soups and breads and, you know, all these other things as a texturizer or to, you know, amplify the flavor, or if it's a vegan, you know, chip or something like that, or a dairy-free chip, and they want it to be cheesy, they add yeast that makes it cheesy, mm -hmm. which sounds kind okay. of gross, but it did. Um, so, you know, things like that, yeasty foods. So breads, um, beer, wine, you know, all those things have a lot of yeast in them. And I was actually talking to a client prior to this about, you know, wine, and she has, um, some yeast issues, but she also has a histamine intolerance issue. And she's like, I just want to have a glass of wine, like a couple nights a week. And I'm like, you can do whatever you want, but <laughs> I'm telling you that the amount of yeast that you have in your body, coupled with the fact that you have a histamine issue, this is not going to go well for you. And I just don't want there to be an amplification of symptoms later on, uh, you know, where, cause wine is really high histamine high sugar and high yeast. So you have three things kind of Perfect. going against you. And so the sugar is going to feed the yeast. The yeast is going to feed the yeast. Um, same thing with beer. You know, it is all three of those things as well. Um, mm -hmm. Plus the gluten component. And wow. then um, you have sugar, gluten, packaged foods of any kind. Corn is also very moldy in nature. And so that is going to feed any kind of yeast um, issue in the body. And so many things have corn in them. I mean, just look at the package, any kind of package, like they put corn in pretty much everything. Um, you know, so for, and then candy, you were talking earlier about how candy feeds candida. <laughs> so yeah. very, very true. Sugar, sugar, sugar. So yeah, just, um, watching those sugars and even like, if the situation's completely out of control, even fruit sugars for a while can really amplify the issue you know, those natural sugars. That's so weird that it kind of like takes over your mind and it just kind of makes you have those cravings where you're like, I just ate a whole bag of Mike and Ike's. Like, I didn't even realize it. Like, where, where'd that go? You know? Um, yes. It's crazy. You know, a lot of people don't realize they have candida, mm -hmm. right? Like all the medications you listed, all the foods you listed. I mean, like who's not doing one of those or has well, had Well, one? yeah, exactly. Yeah. And no. so many people think they have a willpower issue and it's not, it's that candida that's, mm -hmm. that's driving those cravings where you're like, I am going to literally die if I don't eat 10 cookies, you know, <laughs> I can't think of anything else until I, I eat these 10 cookies. And so mm -hmm. many people think it's a willpower issue. And so they're really getting down on themselves about that when it's not, it's an ecosystem issue. And once we balance that out, then they can bypass the cookies and they're fine, but that, that candida will drive you to crave things like crazy and cause hormone disruptions, mm -hmm. you know, mood disorders, brain fog, you know, a lot of like what people mm -hmm. consider like thyroid symptoms or, you know, anxiety disorders, depression, like all these other things. A lot of times is, it's the ecosystem of your gut. You make more of those brain chemicals in your gut than you do in your head. Any yeah. thyroid issues mm -hmm. is directly yeah. related to the gut. So. Yeah. So like when you have candida long-term, I mean, like the way it interacts with the body, right. It has the spores in it. Also, it drives deep. It almost like creates roots, which obviously isn't the right term, but it, think of it as like that, and it just into your epidermis, epithelial tissue, right? And then it'll spread. It'll break things up. 
They'll feed off of your own nutrients, mm -hmm. right? It'll cause sores, things like that. But I mean, like long term, what are what are some of these people looking at health wise? In terms of health conditions? Yeah. So I see a lot of obviously like GI issues, you know, where people come to me like, I'm so bloated all the time. I'm so tired all the time. I have constipation. I have diarrhea. I have a, you know, I go back and forth between the two. I have Crohn's, I have colitis, I have celiac, you know, IBS. They have all these like terms that have been put on them, but why? Like there's, there's always a reason that your body is presenting with the symptoms that it is and just slapping a label on it doesn't tell you why like colitis literally means colon inflammation okay mm -hmm. that doesn't tell me anything about why what this is why this happened it doesn't tell you anything about that so you know a lot of those digestive issues are rooted in all of them i would argue to say are rooted in an ecosystem imbalance a lot of times we'll see, you know, the candida presenting with like C. diff or E. coli or a staph or a strep infection, like in the gut as well. So really diving into these combinations of infections that we see. Um, so for some people, it's just like six different types of yeast, you know, that are growing in their, in their gut. Um, but gut, you know, disruption is number one kind of clue that you have a yeast issue, um, thyroid issues, any kind of autoimmune condition would also be an indicator of potential yeast or just microbial overgrowth in general. There's definitely going to be an ecosystem imbalance. Um, the thyroid is almost never like the, the root of the issue. The thyroid is an innocent bystander to something else going on in the system. Um, people that are just really tired, like chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, um, uh, you know, any kind of brain fog, memory, you know, memory problems that's not related to, you know, being 85 and having dementia, you know, things like that. If you're, you know, in your twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, and you can't remember anything mm. and you have a hard time just like concentrating and focusing in general, um, a lot of times there's candida issues, kids that have, ADD, ADHD, can't focus to save their lives, you know, um, a lot of times we'll have ecosystem imbalances that are yeast related, skin issues, psoriasis, eczema, you know, I could continue to list, you know, a million. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should, you know, yeah. <laughs> nobody's got to read it off, you know, yeah. just put it in the fine print. Uh, but really like what we're getting at is like, it's very common a lot of the diagnoses that are out there today that are plaguing most of the people could be linked back to some form of candida or fungal infection or micro, microbiome disruption um, is basically what I'm understanding here. So we kind of covered some of the medications that can do it, the foods, the long-term impacts, and like just kind of what it's like experiencing that. Right? Like if you say you had a candida infection, um, but you had ADD, right? You go to the doctor, you get tested for ADD. Would they ever think to look for candida? No. Um, practicing functional medicine and practicing like in our typical Western medicine model, like big medical conglomerate, you know, are, are two very different things. So there's a time and a place for everything. Mm -hmm. So if you go to your primary care physician, um, there's like a structure set up for, okay, we're gonna do these tests, give this diagnosis, give this medication. It's a very A plus B equals C kind of scenario. When you're working with a functional medicine practitioner, we're kind of like little detectives. You know, we're trying to find the why, we're always chasing the why. So if you come to me presenting X, Y, and Z for symptoms, I don't really care so much like what the label is that's been placed on you because you can have a hundred different people with the same label placed on them, but you could have a hundred different causes, you know, mm -hmm. um, for that particular label. So um, 
whenever somebody is coming to me with different symptoms, whether it's a kid with ADD or it's an adult with, you know, extreme digestive issues or anything like that, I'm always looking at like the foundational reasons for why that would be. And 99% of things are linked back to the ecosystem of your gut. Like I said, you make more of those brain chemicals in your gut than you do in your head. So it makes, and that's scientific fact, like you can Google that. Um, there's, you know, so it makes sense to look to a child's gut if they're having issues with, you know, explosive behavior or ADD, you know, problems with focusing, you know, all these other issues that we see, um, you know, issues on the spectrum and things like that, um, that are pretty commonplace now. It's like, look at the food supply, look at all the drugs that we're pumping into kids now, look at, you know, just all these things that are presented to children now that, you know, I didn't necessarily grow up with. You might've grown up with a little bit of that because you're a lot younger than I am, but um you know that we have to look back to the ecosystem you know just like nature you know our bodies are a part of nature but if the forest you know if if all of a sudden we start clearing away a lot of the trees and all these other things and the animals disappear you know so it's it's an ecosystem issue you know you can't be like oh what happened to all the birds what happened to all the rabbits what happened to you know well, you cleared away their homes. So of course they're gone. It's the same kind of thing with the ecosystem of your gut. You know, you clear out all the, all the good stuff, then of course there's going to be disarray and chaos. Like, of course. Right. right. And it's just kind of shifting the whole balance. Right. And I, I think part of it is like, the more you get back to a more natural kind of life, you know, more active, more natural food, something that doesn't come out of a box, something that you know, if you set out on your counter and two, three weeks later, it looks exactly the same, you know, like the That's closer okay. you get to like the natural, the better you're going to be. Yeah. Right. So, and that's, that's really what you and I, we work together on helping people, you know, find well, what works for you so we can get you there. Cause it's different for everybody. It is. Um, but when we approach it, obviously I have my herbal formulas for it, but like, what, what are some of your favorite things to use to address it? Um, you know, for, for a person infected with say GI candida. Um, definitely doing a food sensitivity panel so mm -hmm. that we know like what foods are disrupting the ecosystem and just freaking out the immune system. Cause whenever there's infection present, present, whether that's bacterial, viral yeast, you know, candida falls into that category of yeast parasites, anything like that, um, the immune system is going to be in overdrive. So we need to know what foods are also driving that overdrive because the immune system is going to be in that attack mode where it's like, kill, 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 kill this yeast, kill this broccoli, kill this apple, you know, it's just killing everything. And since 80% of your immune system is wrapped up in your gut, it's really important to know what those foods are. So we know, um, the foods obviously, but then also do you have leaky gut syndrome? If so, to what degree that helps us to kind of fine tune the diet a little bit so that we can get that inflammation under control and find that, that healthy balanced ecosystem a lot faster. Um, and then I also like to do a lot of enzyme therapy to really get enzymes help us to digest and assimilate the nutrients from our food. So it kind of gives the body a break um, if there's a lot of inflammation, there's a lot of food sensitivities, there's all these infections going on. It really gives the body a break in terms of that enzyme production, which you make in your liver and you make in your pancreas and, um, your stomach and, you know, like your, your small intestine, like there's all these enzymes that are coming in from various angles, you know, there's enzymes in your saliva and things like that at various points throughout the digestive process. So taking an enzyme really helps to reteach the body how to utilize enzymes and make the enzymes appropriately and kind of fills in the gaps if there's just your pancreas is having a really hard time making enzymes for whatever reason. So enzymes are very helpful. They also help to break down that yeast um, so that it's easier for the immune system to attack it and, and get it out. So enzyme therapy is huge. Rebalancing people's stomach acid if needed is also a really big um, thing that I do. Um, and then herbs, you know, I do a lot of enzyme therapy, but then 
we kind of move over to the herbs as well to really attack from a very specific angle, depending on what somebody needs. Cause you guys have a few formulas. Yeah. You have a lot of different formulas for a lot of different specific. So it can be really specialized to each individual. So what do you, what do right. you do with that? Well, I mean, the big thing is like, you got to look at somebody and just say, okay, where's it at? What's the major area? Usually if it's in the gut, you want to get rid of the gut. Cause that can be just like a place that harbors it. Mm -hmm. it's just you know feeding ground um so typically you always want to start with the gut but we have stuff you know toenail fungus you got it you know systemically you got it in the brain whatever we could do that um the thing when you kill off candida or rebalance it or whatever <clears throat> it sucks it <laughs> sucks it does, yeah. there's, there's a lot of mycotoxins and people always ask about like side effects of herbs not really but like there's effects to like when you kill stuff off there is die off right and how do you balance it right and one of the things that you and i have done is use basically our you know tried and true formulas lc balancer and brown yeah right? and then throw a binder in there too we do that a lot too to help suck up all of that die off like gases and stuff like that because mm -hmm. doing the binders and then yeah the liver support with the brown and lc balancer is tremendously helpful for making mm -hmm. sure that you don't feel absolutely awful and like you're going to rip someone's head off when you're killing this stuff off because it's gnarly exactly and then and then we added that new formula the uh trinicin right oh, to help yes. with mycotoxins and part of the thing that makes it tick is there's there's a lot of almost like terpene like compounds in the herbs that are in there that just help neutralize bind and just get it out right and that combined with a liver support a kidney support more binders right mm -hmm. we're going to make it a lot easier right yeah. so like um there's a lot of ways to do it right there's a lot of ways you can do it you really, you just want to balance the body out sometimes, depending on the person, but sometimes you can hit it really hard and really quick. And it may be a little tough for the first week or two. After that, it's like, it gets better and better and better and better. Right. And then you're like, I didn't, I don't even remember having this issue. Right. Yeah. I feel great. I'm sleeping great. Lost weight. Um, but I guess to answer your question, what, what do we do for the gut is we use the brown, the mm -hmm. LC balancer, the trinicin, and then the formula F, which is candida in the stomach, help clear that out and repair a little bit. And then the formula G is intestinal, bile duct, a little bit of liver, just kind of help allow things to just flow out and move. Um, and again, it depends on the person, but you know, maybe six to eight weeks, sometimes a little bit more, depending on like how severe it is and is it other places. Yeah. But um, yeah, so typically the big things you want to look at is, all right, what is their level of inflammation, right? Yeah. Figure out what's triggering it, right? Cut that out, right? Let's let the body breathe a little bit. Yeah. Let's give it some enzymes to just kind of almost catalyze the healing process, speed that up, make it easier on the body, give it more of a rest, more of a break, give it some binders, neutralize some of the stuff in the body, support the detoxifying organs, right? The liver, the kidneys, um, clear out some of maybe co-infections. Trinicin also helps with that too, right? Sometimes there's a little bit of staph or strep that can be helpful for that. And then clear it out in the gut, right? And with that, and then our support, right? Like we will work with everybody, you know. Yes. We'll join and walk you through it. Um. Yeah, we we've, we've done it for a lot of people. We have, yeah. yeah. It's it's really cool to see the turnaround too, for sure. Um, when people have just been feeling so yucky for so mm -hmm. long, and then within a matter of weeks, you know, mm -hmm. it's a million times better. Um. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's. I mean. When you start, it can seem kind of scary because, you know, you're going to have to go through like this little walk through the fire to get, you know, to the other side, basically kind of thing. But with all the support things that we put in place, you know, with the brown, the LC balancer, the binder, like that makes it much, much easier. And then just, you know, our support in terms of, 
email, text, phone calls, you know, all of that to help hold people's hands through it, I think is mm -hmm. helpful. And it makes it way less painful where, you know, you can get, it's just really that initial week or two in the beginning that can be a little tricky for people. But once you get through that, then you're good to go. Um, any sort not of feeling everybody gets that. Not, and everybody. not everybody gets that. That's true. Some people just feel better right away and they don't have any of the gnarly stuff. So, and that's what we're trying to minimize with those support products anyway. So. Right. And there's tweaks and changes, like say yeah. you're having an issue. Okay. We'll, we'll shift this around. Oh, this is going on. Maybe we'll try a little bit of this, see if we can balance that out. And usually we can get it right away. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Right. So it just helps having as much information as possible. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask is like, you go to the doctor and say you got candida. What do they give you? An antifungal what or an that antibiotic. <laughs> and the mm -hmm. antibiotic is going to make it worse. Um, an antifungal will kill the yeast, but it doesn't address the reason that the yeast was there in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, and oftentimes people are on antifungals again and again and again and again, because it's wiping out a lot of the good with the bad, same as an antibiotic, you know, mm -hmm. so it's still disrupting that, that ecosystem. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of like the prescription antifungals because they do wipe out a lot of that good stuff. So when, when we're doing our protocol, you know, it's kind of like you have to put out the fire and then you bring in the construction crew and rebuild everything. So mm -hmm. we can't just wipe out the candida and then just be like, see ya, you're good. You know, we have to make sure that we're re-inoculating the gut with all the good stuff so that you don't have this issue again and again and again. Um, that's that's really the, the kicker, the important part, I think, is making sure that you follow through and you don't just kill it off. Because a lot of people will do like mm -hmm. a candida diet where they'll, yeah. you know, cut out all the foods that feed candida for a couple of months. And then sure. they start eating the same way that they did before. And then, you know, in nine months, they need to do the candida diet again, because they didn't address the root cause of the issue. And they didn't re-inoculate their gut with the good stuff after they starved off some of the candida. Um, cause just doing a candida diet typically is not going to completely get rid of the issue. Just cause like you said, it's a really sticky gummy little bugger and it mm -hmm. roots down into the lining of the, the intestines. And it's just, it doesn't want to die. Like it's, oh. it's made to thrive. Yeah. yeah. So, They're gnarly little guys. They are. Yeah. It's pretty gross. Um, yeah. So that's, I guess kind of like the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what we do for candida. And at a later date, we're going to talk about environmental mold and things like chronic inflammatory response syndrome and how mold um, in buildings and things like that, water damage buildings can yeah. infiltrate the body with mold in a different way. Um, so yeah, we'll yeah. be talking, talking about yeast and mold for a long time here. So um, just as a reminder, none of our videos are meant to take the place of any kind of advice from whomever your healthcare practitioner is, and we're just here for information. So, but if you have any um, comments, concerns, you have any topics that you want us to discuss, feel free to just put those, you know, in the comments um, and we'll make more videos on what, you know, questions you have and what you want to talk about. And if you want to book a free consultation with me, um, you can go to my website, which is aaronthole.com. You can shoot me an email at thole.aaron um, at gmail.com. And then if you want to contact Colton and talk about herbs and all that good stuff, he can drop his digits here too. And we can talk about herbs. We can talk about herbs. We can talk about, you know, baseball. We can talk about whatever. <laughs> Whatever you want to call them for. <laughs> but uh, uh, number is 612-808-9235. And uh, can't text me. It's a landline, just so you know. Um, but yeah, I think that was really productive. Uh, in closing, next time we're going to talk about environmental. What percentage of people's houses have mold in them? Over 50%. Which is pretty insane. 
it's get it tested. Disturbing. Yeah. So we're going to talk a lot about that next time. All right. Thank you. Talk to you later.